Hello and welcome to another episode of Front and Horse Live. We've got David Darns here. David, how you doing, buddy? It's great to see you. I'm doing good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm great. I am. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. I, I, we, we, we had like a pre-show call, and uh, I fessed up that I know very little about web components. I think I said a lot of a lot of pronouns to this, or, or just a lot of words of like there's stuff where you do things, and things happen and stuff becomes things and then you you agreed that i i had nailed it um but you said and that yeah, you would you pass the interview you just did it just yeah just smash it. that's pretty much what i said in the interview to be honest as long as you're confident um but yeah so i i am coming in fresh here i know very very little but uh, i am very excited to learn from you but before we get into all that I, i'm i just want to say i am i'm pumped I'm, I'm pumped to learn about this but also chatting with you is a blast uh, but for people who haven't had the chance to chat with you, who are you, David Darns? Great question. Um, yeah, I'm Dave, David Darns. Well, uh, you can call me Dave. Um, I'm a front-end developer at Nord Health. Uh, Nord Health is a big company that kind of does all different like health applications for veterinary and clinics and all that kind of stuff. And the main job that I focus on is the design system there and that design system helps us design and build all of our applications and one aspect of that design system is our components and our components are built with web components more specifically we use lit the um, package to help us build out those components kind of more rapidly than the uh, vanilla way of doing it in the web so that's my day to day that's awesome yeah um, since you launched the Nord Health design system. It has been getting nothing but rave reviews. It's five stars, 120. I think that's like a 98 on Rotten Tomatoes, maybe a 99. It is beloved uh, by the community. I've, I've seen nothing but praise. And um, then you wrote a web.dev article. By the way, the, the hi- so David, I'm, I'm not sure if you know too much about Twitch, but like this is this is big stuff. This is like people are excited for this. So I just want to say, chat, I am so appreciative. I'm loving this. Thank you so much for all of the subs and everything that's happening. Uh, y'all are fantastic. And also, Dave, like you're just bringing the energy, buddy. Like people are loving the I Legos. Do. They're loving the essence. Do not of- hide hide the sh- sh- pile of shame. Do not look, avert your eyes. Um, this is Pile. what happens when um, anybody who's got kids, they might understand that what happens is things take priority. And sadly, um, the Lego has played like second, third, maybe fourth fiddle to um, a little girl. So uh, yeah, it, one day I'll get to it. One day I'll get to the, what was it? There'll point? be college and you'll build that bmw or whatever yeah it's perfect yeah yeah porsche and everything yeah (laughs) closest i'm gonna get closest i'm gonna get to a porsche (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so back to the design system just because the chat is absolutely we just hit ben gifted a whole bunch of subs ben thank you so much this is incredible um yeah the design system has been getting so much love across the community like i'm i just can't stop saying it and then uh you wrote an article for web dev that kind of talks about how you use, um, I keep wanting to say styled components, web components, um, to work with that design system. And that was kind of where we got connected and we just decided to have you on for, uh, for speaking specifically about web components. But can you talk a little bit about, um, the design system itself, uh, Nord Health's, design system in particular is, is what I'm trying to say. Let me find the yeah. actual, yeah. So the, so the, so the article is an interesting one because it's quite a specific uh, use case. It's, it's, we actually got inspired by uh, Leah uh, Favreau, I think that's how I pronounce his surname, um, who kind of created this method of um, creating more like public and private custom properties. And I want to kind of, Maybe I should just zoom out a little bit. We use, uh, as I said, we use web components, but one of the benefits, but also drawbacks to web components is like complete style encapsulation because it's inside of a shadow DOM. So right. you're like, you're almost like an iframe. You're kind of creating quite 
isolated styles, which is brilliant for kind of creating consistent components that don't suffer the consequences of maybe like inherited user agent styles and, and like styles that are on the page that could leak into those components. So that's really good. Um, but then the issue with that is when our developers and designers and all that kind of people that are using these components in, in the product, um, they want to be able to control and tweak and style those things. Like they have issues where oh, I don't need a shadow on this component or Got I don't it. want the border radius on there. But the problem is you have to kind of get inside of the component. You want to be able to like turn the dials and, and um, edit stuff. So what we did is, and I'm in the process of doing it like right now is um, making public and private custom properties, uh, CSS custom properties. So what happens is uh, you can use custom properties on every single one of our, or pretty much every single component that we have. So you can start borders and maybe the, the box shadow and things like that. But as component authors, we can intercept those styles and kind of steer them into the right place. So uh, for example, um, the checkbox component may have a color on it, but obviously you don't want to color, you don't want a background color on the entire component. You just want to color the, the box when you check it, it goes blue. So you might want to just change the color of that. Right. And you can't style that specifically because it's inside the shadow DOM. Got but it. with a custom property, we can say dash dash, uh, was it a checkbox box background color and then apply that color and then that leaks in there or winds it way in and um, applies those styles. Uh, yeah, the, they should be on the docs now, but I'm like literally in the process of doing it. Like, and you said so. And you said so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not expecting it. I was just curious if it was, but but honestly, like, like the, these uh, these docs are fantastic. Like all everything about this uh, is just, it's great. Uh, honestly, Thank like you so much. of, of like, the design systems, this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. So uh yeah, it's it's awesome. Thank so you. yeah, that's um, I I I always forget that not even the user agent style sheet styles can touch that. That's uh, that's just a weird concept to even think about. That it's just a, a no man's land in there. Well, it's 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 interesting because um, all sort of all elements on the page do have a shadow DOM sort of. So if you had your shadow DOM like inspector turned on. And you went to an input you can open up the input and there's some bits and pieces uh, in there that are like divs um my colleague nick uh calls the input uh is a bunch of divs in a trench coat <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> i can't take credit for that phrase but it's it, that's the, the reality because the, the way that these elements kind of work are pretty much like the way okay the web components is very akin to like the the kind of typical way elements kind of exist they 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 have all the aria stuff and like focus styles and all those kinds of things and, and we pretty much try and do the same thing that's kind of one of the benefits of using web components is it's very close to Got what it. normal like elements are or typical elements on the on the thing the okay. other thing is you can use web components anywhere so you can use it inside of Vue. You can use it like vanilla. You can use it inside of React. Granted, there's a little bit of manipulation to do in React, but pretty much all the frameworks you can just drop it in, script, and away you go. And like you can you can uh, do that. And 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 another thing, it kind of fallbacks quite elegantly. So if the JavaScript isn't there, it kind of behaves like a div. And what you could do is then kind of expose the innards, much in the same way as um, detail summary. You know how detail summary is a yeah. toggle and it opens and closes. Um, if the browser didn't understand those elements, which very like really old ones don't, right. it kind of just exposes the innards and like at least Got you get it. some experience of like seeing the content. Content's not gone. Readable. Yeah, cool. yeah, it's 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 kind of gracefully degrades, I guess. Cool. Yeah, uh, just. You talk about in, in inputs seem magical. I don't. I, I definitely don't fully understand them, but that's way off topic for this <laughs> yeah. show. I yeah, just the typing into an input field. What's going on? Yeah. Anyway, I would love to talk about that with you an, another time. But for now, um, so yeah, this is a bit of your background, a bit of the project that kind of uh, you've been working on for the past few months, and that's been coming along great i'm dropping your um site in here also chat how's the how's the audio is um 
Yeah. It, yeah. Just like let me know. I, I think I'm I'm I might be a little too loud. I think you might be a little too soft, David. I'll turn you up a little bit. Sorry if I missed that. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, all the all the love at the at the start of the show. I'm trying to get words out. Words don't always come out. Audio is good now. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Chris. Um, but yeah, I will drop your. He 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 is a bit soft. I think he should be good now. But but let me know. Yeah. Um, I'm too soft. <laughs> I'm just too so, soft. I, I, I actually do want to turn you down for a second because you are tied into the browser and I'm about to click this button on your site that uh, I absolutely love. So I'm going to turn this down to about there. And if you click this nice little button... David Dons! Oh. So wonderful. It is so good. Um, so that is who, Dave? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> that's my dad yelling down the... Uh, uh, down the uh, microphone. It, well, actually, he, he answers the phone every single time I like that, without fail. I actually, he came back from a cruise the other day and he did it again, um, <laughs> like on cue. And then I had a thirty-minute podcast from him personally about his whole experience. Um, he's he, he's great. I, I kind of wish. I, I think it might be a bit of exploitation if I just turn his audio messages into a podcast. I don't think he would appreciate that as much as I think. Yeah, but if he doesn't find out about it, it's not exploitation. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, that's not how that... Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. you're in the clear. But it's just amazing. I thought that was you or someone... But you're... The, your, your dad does this all the time. You even showed me a tweet where like he just leaves you messages and just... Your dad just shouts your full name. Anyway... We, we we had a whole lot of fun in our in our call about that. I I don't want to take up the entire stream <laughs> on that. It, I I just love it so much. Um, but we should talk about web components and lit just to kind of introduce that to the chat mm. who might be still sitting here going, all right, I know who David Darns is. What are web components? What is lit? Where should we go or what should we talk about to kind of introduce the topic? Well, out of the gate, you can go to lit.dev and check that out. That's where you can find out about the package and how to build components with lit. Uh, there's lots of handy documentation about um, the life cycle and like tooling. And there's there's actually kind of, they're, they're building quite a lot of videos. So you can learn a bit more about not only kind of getting in deep with like kind of com complex stuff, but also like starting off and like you're new to this stuff. And and, and to be honest, I've watched both. Hey that's everyone, really, really, welcome. Really, really helpful. Sorry. Sorry, I started to talk at me. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, really helpful. Um, but uh, essentially what Lit does is it gives you some kind of nice added stuff on top of the existing uh, web component API. Forgive me if I'm not using the perfect like grammatics with this. I never um, do, so you're good. Uh, yeah, it's, but, uh, but anyway, like, this stuff is very, very close to how you would build a web component if you weren't using any framework. So you can create components now just with using vanilla JavaScript. Um, okay. You can, and then you can start using HTML and all that kind of jazz. But um, Lit just gives you some like extra stuff on top, so, like state and like styles and template string stuff. And a lot of it, I really like how um, it tries to follow akin to how the spec would be. So at some point, it's kind of, it's gonna get superseded, much in the same way that kind of jQuery and things like that kind of ended up where everything caught up and went, ah, oh, right, it. well, we're, we're just gonna take that and use that. And it's kind of, you know, that's, I feel like that's the elegant way of the web where stuff kind of degrade, kind of disappears and fades into the background and then becomes not necessary because- The platform just gets up. good enough. The, yeah, exactly. Um, so, just as as a quick aside for chat, chat, I would love your help um, because there's so much about web components and lit, I guess, as like a subset of that, uh, that I don't know. Uh, I told Dave that I kind of come from React world. I, I know Vue. I know a little teeny tiny bit of Svelte. Um, and so I am familiar with all that kind of componentization. Um and I would love your your help, kind of surfacing the best questions. And uh, we have, let me find it. Here it is. Let's hope let's hope this works. Yeah, it's 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 here. So once people start asking questions in chat, 
uh, this page will populate with those questions and we'll hold, hold on to them. Oh wait, I need to make sure my Superbase instance is still up. Let me do that while I, I explain this just so that I, I, I know we can actually capture those questions because I think it's been a little bit since we, we, we turned this. This is a very different on. live coding that's happening right now. We're going we're gonna to go extra nested level deep. Man, we are already like, we, we are calling through like five different sources. I think I'm sending my video through one source. Dave is sending his audio through one source and his video through, I think that same source. But I'm sending my like, yeah, my audio and my video are going through. Two, we've got a real... Uh, messy setup so right videos, now the video is going through myspace the audio is going through msn and then you know uh, maybe we've got a tumblr feed of there's like a little bit of doing. snapchat in there so we're gonna lose it every yeah. every 10 seconds or so um but yeah cool. okay so the front end horse thing sh should be up and, and, and running soon but um i've got a bunch of questions i want to make sure chat yours gets answered as well um and i'm gonna try to save those like for the end so i'm not stopping dave going like well what's it like compared to react or whatever um He's 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 got places to be, so we're gonna try to get through to the <laughs> end. And uh, oh, we're already oh, awesome! The questions are already coming in. Perfect. Yeah. So I guess it was not shut down as I thought. Awesome. I'm I'm loving the questions already. Uh, keep those coming, and I'll just drop the I I, I wonder thing periodically. But thank you so much for these awesome questions. Uh, cool. So back to I'm um, I'm slacking on my Duo desktop. That's perfect. Awesome. So this is how we can kind of instantiate or cre create a web component and then we can just import it into any like HTML file or any, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be using 11 So I'm guessing we can create this and then import it. Is that kind of how it's going to go? So what, what I was hoping to do is, is kind of something that's kind of progressively enhanced. So, okay. so a lot of this, the kind of core functionality that we, that we talked about, like we'll, we'll get into it into a second. Like I, I'm going to, say we'll build it statically so okay. most of it will be static and then we'll use web components to just kind of bring it up and kind of either speed things up or kind of create a bit more performant or a bit more live shall we say so cool. the the these uh in in this instance like a web component is kind of going to be acting a bit like it just like a front end like library for or client side library to just add a little bit more enrichment to the page or jazz up something that's already there should we say awesome all right cool and and just because i don't think <laughs> we talked about it a bunch and, and I'm, I'm sorry chap the thing that thing that you're saying there is is a hit counter the the the, the whole thing at, at the end of this and i'm sorry i'm jumping around so much i've I, apparently the brain's just on a bouncy kind of day uh we're going to be building a a hit counter that um will update with the latest most accurate number because when someone comes to your website for you have to do a few things. You have to uh, welcome them to your website. Say, hey, welcome to my website. That's rule one. That's just politeness. Uh, rule two, they have to sign your guest book. How else do you know that they're there? Rule three, they have to see your hit counter at the bottom of the screen and just know how many people have been to this site. So those are the three rules of having a website. We're just focusing on rule three today. Uh, guest books, we can do another time. Welcoming, that's all on you. So um, yeah. Step three, so we're making a hit counter, progressively in, enhancing it with a web component using lit. Did, did I kind of cover it, Dave? Yes, and and I think we're inadvertently going to do a bit of 11 like interestingness. So I, I feel like we're perfect. We're, much in the same way of having this call, we're going to be doing bits of all sorts, really. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right. Should we just get into it and kind of go from there? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Awesome. Uh, should I open my VS Code? Yes. All right. Let's get straight in there. I'm going to actually bring up on the bigger screen because I think I need more screen. I need more. There we go. All right. Nice. So uh, I'm going to go back to my repos folder. I'm there. What should I run? I think uh, to begin with, I, I'm going to hopefully we'll do this from scratch. So I think we okay. should go straight over to 11 and cool. uh, fork one of the base blogs it doesn't have to be their base blog but um it could be where like where can i find i that? think we've got um i think we've got templates down the side somewhere maybe a little bit further down um maybe there's uh there's some like template examples da, da, da. maybe a bit further down in the sidebar i think it's near the bottom um oh okay uh 
Come on. No worries. Where are we? Um... Where are we? There are themes somewhere. Like just do yeah, LMT like starter templates. Yeah, yes. starter projects. There we go. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, always tricky what people call it. Is it a starter? Is it boilerplate? Yeah. Is it template? Uh, all right, yeah. cool. So, which one are we going for? So let's go with the eleven eleven T base blog, which is like the first one there. So if we click Perfect. straight through to it, um, and then there's a link in that yellow kind of box at the end of it. There we go. Like that should go to the repo. Got it. Um, so this. We'll start with this, pretty vanilla. Um, Should I use this template or clone it? Yeah. All well, right, cool. If you use it as a template, it'll, it'll. I think it severs the fork, like it kind of makes it as like a brand new Nice, project. that makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to go... Uh, components demo components and demo. create. Should only be a few seconds, Dave. Um, do you have any stories that you want to tell? Um, what's your favorite Lego? Never mind, we don't have time. Uh, we're moving oh. on. We are moving so, on. All right. Let's um, let's do uh, let's hook this up to Netlify. I love I love like wiring up straight to Netlify. I'm like the satisfaction want, of that. I want it all. All, all right, cool. Like, powered, <laughs> like cool. going for it. I'm just gonna pull it off because I I always I'm always a little hesitant around this aspect where I'm like I always forget like what's there, uh, so I'm gonna hit just add new site import an existing project. Mm -hmm. All right, GitHub. I think I'm good here, but I'm just gonna pull it off. Oh, okay, we're good. So uh, web components. No web, oh, it's component. A web component. Yeah. Does it need the hyphen? It might. Oh, oh that's, that's, that search is too precise. It's a, it? <laughs> it's a little on the nose, Nellify. Let's, let's <laughs> get a little fuzzier, please. Um, is that this looks good? all good to go. All yeah, right, deploy. That looks as expected. So we're going to let that spin up cool. and get going. Um, so Ooh, uh, that's, another I, thing I'm is... sorry, but that's a solid name. Bucolic platypus? Bucolic, okay. Bucolic. Wow. Let's actually find out what that means. Search Google. Yes. Relating to the pleasant aspects of the countryside and country life. Like that's that's a that's a great wow. platypus, right? The church wow. is lovely for its bucolic setting. And its bucolic wow. platypus. Like that's just nice. All right. We're doing well, chat. <laughs> that one. Things are going good. <laughs> All okay. right. Okay. Now we're wired up to to Netlify. So um like we were saying, we, we want to have like a hit counter. We want to see how many people are viewing the page? Um, right. So we need that data source. So that data source is actually going to come from Netlify Analytics. So cool. uh, if you flip over to there um, and enable that, just go for. Break. We got big there bucks go. around here, chat. We're just we're just, Netlify. Call me. We'll 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 figure this out. <laughs> I use this on my sites, and I have to say it's like it works really nice because I, I don't have to worry like gdpr regulation stuff like that because it, it's it's all server side that part's nice um, I mean... yeah and you get just enough you get i don't want tons of data i just want enough to know what's popular what's where people yeah. are coming from things like that well the only downside to this is it's only server side and so you probably don't know how many people have clicked the sound button so that's the only downside i think that is true uh, although Ah, so uh, teaser. You, you, if you keep for the chat, like if you keep clicking it, you might hear some other people as well. And that way, because I use Netlify functions to like provide that, nice. I do actually get some like requests. So I do Perfect. get to know the subsequent clicks. Um, so yeah, now we're wired up to Netlify analytics and all that kind of stuff. Maybe we should put in the chat um, some links to our brand new blog Good that call. is full of. Uh, wonderful bucolic uh, blog posts. I'm going uh, to. Um, it's right the underneath the options edit site name. Oh. I'm locking this in while we still can. Oh I'd, yes. I wanted to make sure no one's going to swoop in and grab that out from under my nose. So chat there nice. you go. Bucolic platypus yeah. dot .net dot app way bubonic platypus studio. <laughs> <laughs> The Too third soon. plague. Too yeah, soon. we don't need another plague. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so cool. um, people can go to the chat and like um, uh, click on that link, click on the blog posts, 
just get some views going. We just yeah. need some numbers on there so we, we can see stuff turning up in the analytics. But we'll leave that running. That data Perfect. will come up in eventually over time. Um, uh, and now what we should do is get that repo cloned down cool. um, from GitHub. And we'll... All right. So just chat. Once again, please go to bucolicplotipus.netlify.app and click around on all the stuff so we got some some juicy data. We're not going to tell... Or, or, we're not going to advertise to you or anything. We just want to make this hit counter work. It doesn't work without that. So, in, in, unless the bucolic thing really takes off, and then you know, there will be a merch store. I promise you that the platypus. <laughs> like, yeah, if we can find a dot platypus, it's it's just yeah, front end horse is dead. Long live bucolic platypus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, CD web components. Cool. I don't. I actually don't think I can do it that way just because of how messed up my uh, open folder web components. Nope, back up. Yeah, let's just do this. Select folder. Here we go. Um, my whole terminal stuff is kind of a disaster right now. So I just keep keep rolling. It works well oh. enough, but I can't do code dot anymore. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, it happens. So, All right. NPMI? I, I, I Yep, yep. Go cool. for it. How how familiar are you with uh, 11T? How, how many spins it's have you taken? JavaScript, over? right? Now. <laughs> um, I've I've I worked on a kind of a pet project uh, like a year ago and haven't really touched it much since. But I built like okay. a semi-functional site, but haven't really worked with it since. Cool, cool. Well, that's that's fine. We're 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 gonna kind of it's gonna kind of be a light touch, but actually we're gonna. I, when I experimented with this the other day, I was like, "Oh, damn! This was quite, quite neat, quite tidy." So cool. we're gonna like to provide all the blog posts and kind of all the pages as well with um, extra data. So we're gonna provide a global like data object to Eleventy, and then pass that down to um, posts. And then I guess we can send it to the home page as well. Cool. But I, I, we'll just do the posts for now because then we can see popular posts and not popular posts got um it. so yeah how's that let's going see on? do we have any popular posts yet oh, oh. man we are charting Woo. um huge in alaska and uh america we got some columbia columbia thank you uh we've got a little bit of that ireland ireland we mm. appreciate you we see you thank you ireland um yeah second post is doing pretty well that homepage is crushing though so yeah. wow Please wow, keep going to, to yeah. So any any kind of exploring around the site, we really appreciate it. Um, we we need to speak to Carbon and get those ads going quickly. Mm, mm, mm. All right, we are installed. Okay, so what we want to head on over to is uh, our .11t.js file, which is like the core of the um, like functionality and stuff and what we want to do um and i'm trying to refrain from just like copying and pasting what i did yesterday because oh, yeah. <laughs> that could be that could be the answer i'll just pretend i'm typing fast okay mm, i'll just da, 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 da. I'll, I'll turn my keyboard off make typing sounds just yeah yeah <laughs> clickety clack <laughs> clickety clack um where are it where is it where it may be um yeah the 11 js file um cool okay so there was this article was actually a couple of articles one from jim uh nielsen so uh j-i-m uh n-i-e-l-e-n -E um if you head to their blog oh, they've got this i'm article. going there okay got it yeah sorry sorry i was i was yeah, Jim Nielsen. So, Jim Nielsen, uh, the member of the California State Senate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I think it's .net. If we search for like .net, like uh, how about we add the word eleven yeah, to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I spelled Nielsen wrong or Nielen or whatever. Oh, it's it's uh, L S E N. L Nielsen. Yes. Okay. Still, that guy's crushing it with SEO. Damn you, State Senator Jim Nielsen. Mm. Let's uh, let me dig it out of my um, array of blog posts, and I will put it into the thing. So, Jim 
this bastard probably has an 11T site. That's probably why. All right. Um, wait, not. Can't you do this? Not Senate. Okay, that's not how you do it, apparently. Not. How do you do that? Is it? I'm just finding the. Chat, help me out. How do, how do you do the not search in Google? Minus quote Senate. Thank you. This is it. Ah, okay, I love food and websites. That sounds like that's a good. That's it. You want to head right. over to the blog? Is there a blog oh, link? There yes. Is. Um, so there's a blog post about using analytics from uh, Netlify Analytics. So it was quite an quite useful stuff. Mm. See, look, they're they're using popular this month, courtesy of Netlify. Yeah. So they're using Netlify to actually pull through the most popular blog posts. Um, that's one of them. Yes, very nice. Um, that doesn't look like it. Here it is. That's it. There we cool. go. So this is like pulling. So they've they've pulled through the data and then produced like a set of blog posts that's the most popular out right. of all of it. Um, there's also on this. Uh, uh, I think it's Raymond Camden that's on this blog post. If you were to scroll down, there's actually an article about getting that data directly. Yeah, Raymond Camden. Um, this was like really handy as well um, yeah. on how to get the API data um, from Netlify Analytics. And it's effectively using node fetch. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, so we want to get, we want to get node fetch. So we want to like install node fetch. Now, uh, before you do it, I think we have to install version two because version three only works with imports. Um, yeah. And I don't want to get into the whole rigmarole of like ESM and like <laughs> what different kinds to use. So if you do npm install node fetch at two uh, and then do dash dash save at the end, um, I think that will get it sorted for us. Let's check. Um, so we've got it in there. Yep, looks good. Yep, very nice. So that nice. gives us very... the, like, the latest version of two, right? Yes, yep, that's fine. Because it, it, I think three and up is an import, like modern like ESM import only thing, which cool. is frustrating, but that's fine. That's fine. Maybe I'll, you know, one day I'll look at it to whether you can just do it that way. Got um, it. Should we run uh, anything? E I guess no. we don't need to well yeah. we can run npx so if you do npx at 11t that and i think if you do watch and serve oh you could do start yeah do npm start npm start and just spin that right up cool the chat is right you can use fetch natively right now um with 17.5 and up i think of node um but i don't want to i was making sure that we have it and we can use it rather than like Got just it. in case uh it's not My there because i was like in, just some insurances especially if we we push it up to netlify who knows what versions and things like that can Got happen. It. i just want to guarantee it's there makes sense um, but great point chat um yeah. thank you david uh sorry uh no sorry <laughs> your dave, is that a david me is david. Yeah, yeah. david aaron yeah um cool. nice Cool. So, uh, yeah, head on. Well, just yeah, open up the local host maybe and and have a have a gander. Yeah, at your go. beautiful oh. website. Wow, it's beautiful. just like I remember it. Mm. Um, so for people who just got here, please go to this site, Anthony. Good to see you, and uh, click around. We want some more stats. We need want some more analytics because it's a nice site. It's well, we got sixty eight total page views. Wow, this is my most popular site I've ever built. Um, <laughs> this is right ho so well, now i finally we... found success all right so um <laughs> we're doing it and it's and it's bucolic <laughs> <laughs> bucolic platypus all right uh cool. yeah so we need to import node fetch so we can import it just like we are with the uh the rest of the import okay there. so you'll see like like plugin navigation we can do const 
fetch and like import it like a require sorry a require not an import yeah, yeah. so require and then node fetch do it like that cool. and then what we can do is get uh get the data from netlify analytics okay um now this is doing it with a global data uh the global add global data api and that's like in 11t so i'm i i'm going to throw some code over because i think it will help us a little bit to perfect like speed things up along uh, no more css color takes bucolic platypus from here on out that's it i'm a changed <laughs> man yeah i have no opinions on your colors so that's a little bit of code um that we can drop in i, I put it in have you got it yeah got i it? do have it so where, where yeah. do i put it uh you want to go up to the top actually you can just put it up to the top and inside of the module exports block there so you can just put it immediately like that's it okay yeah immediately in there so uh yeah. let's explain it maybe briefly so Perfect. we're doing an async uh request uh and then we're gonna use this url which is like a hidden API endpoint in Netlify Analytics that they don't document, uh, but it appears to work perfectly fine. So uh, all good. Um, yeah, we're going to do a fetch. We have to get a couple of tokens. So we need a, a site ID and we need a token from Netlify itself right. to uh, understand what it is. Uh, and I will point, I will direct you to them. Maybe we can hide the token or we can delete the token later just for security reasons. I've got um, a cool plugin to hide it. So it should should work. We'll see. I'll okay, do it off screen okay. to start, but yeah. Yep, yep. So um, we can put that in environment variables if you want. I was um, uh, a bit like chaotic and just put it in a couple of lets um, to, and then we, I would obscure them later because <laughs> cool. this stuff's not going to get exposed on the front end, um, right. but we, we will need it later. Anyway, um, so this, this will get our blob of data. So maybe we need to go and get the um, site ID. So if we head back over to Netlify uh, and into the site details. So I think if we go over to site settings uh, and then you'll see site ID, there it is front and center. Oh, okay, um, cool. And you can copy it. Um, so we'll copy that. You could either plunk it straight in there or put a let and or I was just going to start this... the .env or or mm -hmm. no is mm -hmm. that is that is that tricky for Netlify? All right, cool. No, do it, do it. Let's go for it. Uh, um, although we have to put this into Netlify, like, yeah, into the uh, yeah the details like that. Um, and then Netlify. Uh, so yes, API I'm going key. So to, uh, let me see if I still have this plug in. <laughs> Environment comments, cloak hide comments. Yes. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, no, n n not comments. Hide environment variables. Where is cloak? Why isn't that? So I have this plugin called cloak. And it should, if it's enabled, uh, it should be it's doing enabled. the thing. Is it, does it have to have like a certain string in there? Or... Cloak hide secrets. There we go. So it should. Should be hiding those secrets, but Cloak doesn't want to work. So I'm glad I tested it on the uh, not as important one. Does it want to work? Hmm. Weird. It's usually it, it's usually pretty good. Close All and right. open it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me try it one more time. So Cloak show secrets. Where did that go? All right, it's doing a great job. And now hide secrets. Nope. Toggle secrets, restore default <laughs> scopes. No, that's how I do it. All right, so we're just gonna have to uh, obscure it in some way. I'll just do it off screen or whatever. Or does it not matter? Like, is this an API key that's like, ah, if it's if it's live for a minute? So it's fine. the site ID, it's it's fine. No one. I don't think people can do very much with okay. that. Okay. Well, chat. Um, if you just promise not to do anything we can be good like yeah if, if, yeah. if chat can just promise to be nice then i don't have to worry about it mm. cool but can this promise. can be deleted anyway right, cool. this can be deleted later so it's, it's fine. perfect all right um, that works yeah 
so what we need to do as well is get that variable um Clock oh yeah there. drop it straight in and, and then, then the token thing we need to get from netlify as well but we want to do that at top level so hopefully you can hide stuff on your or you can hide it away um your main account so your main oh okay so this is like account. this is like the big dog setting this is like i'm going i'm going yeah all the way to the top yeah. this is my so, profile all right, so where am I going to? I'm like in my own little area. So you're going to security. Uh, I go to uh, oh dear, personal access oh, tokens. I clicked on my I clicked on my profile page. Yeah, yeah, and then cool. I went into user settings, and then I went applications, and then I went to personal access tokens, and I created a new access token. Okay, cool. Uh, and and named it appropriately so you can remember it. And All right, yeah, I called it stream. It. Delete me. So it's perfect. Yes. All right, I'm pulling. Uh, actually, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop this here, just because. Uh, yeah, let's like quick post it to myself. Delete that thing, so that I don't run up a uh, a nice spicy bill. <laughs> cool. All right. Nice. I think we're set there. Cool. Nice. You got that. Yeah. Now. So we'll now, s- now what we can do is. Um, if we, uh, I think we need to do like a good old fashioned console log, uh, okay. right before that return and do result.json, uh, brackets. Result log. I'm just going to do a wait result JSON cool. And then return that and, uh, I don't know if I needed to do that, but I very don't. nice, very tidy. Um, so that won't log there. That will log in the CLI. So right. or fail. Uh, token is not defined. Oh, that's probably because we hadn't put it in by the time we got there. So you can got it. That it makes sense. Up. Let's do it again. Try it again. All right. So oh, we had something. Hey, what is that? That look at that. That's our data. Chat, we got to get these numbers up. These are rookie numbers. Number two, tags. Oh, okay, no, to be fair, these are tags. Chat, I appreciate you going so deep that you're clicking on tags. <laughs> Love it. 16 of you hit the third post. Really appreciate all 16. Um, nice. Cool. All right. So, so we already have the data. Like That's pretty yeah. quick. That's really cool. I had no idea it was just <laughs> this, this easy. Um, and it oh, just gives I you love paths. I love the global data like option. I'm, I'm actually using this on my site because I my my content is in a, a ghost CMS like instance. Got it. And then I use it headlessly, so I pull in ghost as like a huge data object, and then I pass it all around the, the ghost site. Ghost is uh, really cool. I'm I'm curious about he- headless ghost, but um, but yeah, it's. That's I neat. I enjoy it. It's got shortcomings, but um, it's really good for like publishing. Really good focused like product for that. So if you yeah. want to like blog and do newsletters and all that kind of i do that thing. yeah i'm kind of into you that you do so. that i remember now you do that <laughs> uh yeah so we've got this big blob of data um cool. and now what we want to do is divvy that up and pass it to the relevant uh ah, posts. okay so uh we don't need to yeah we can get rid of the console log and kind of neaten that all back up and just leave it at that so that's our analytics blob like or like cool. data point so now what we need to do is if you look in the sidebar, you'll see posts. There's a folder of posts near the top in the sidebar. Uh, wait, should we, hey, we're, 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 we're going to cancel this, but uh, uh, if yeah, so very nice. This there. Yeah. Because we're committing this and it's gonna be public. So I just want to make sure that, yeah, anyway, uh, sorry, mm-hmm. you, you're saying posts, posts. Yep. So posts, and you'll see there's all the posts in here, but then there's also posts.json. And okay. that posts.json is data that's being given to every single post in Got that it. directory. Um, so at the minute, all it's doing is, is it's applying the posts tag to like all of them. So then you can loop through them as posts. So like four post in posts, blah, 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 um, and do it that way. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to add some extra stuff in here. So let's rename posts.json to posts.js or sorry, posts.11t data. So 11ty data.js. Okay. So now we can now we can write JavaScript in here. Um, 
and we can turn that 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 object into a module dot exports uh, equals. So now we're doing we're going JS instead of JSON. <laughs> and um, let me get the next little sampley thing for that. Uh, cool. da, 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 da. Here we are. So what we can do is there's a few things that uh, is happening, but um, what I'll do is I'll pass over the nice. Yeah, Ben Ben Myers has a great blog post on the data cascade in 11T. Oh, that nice. really helped. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like the data cascade is one of those things that I I, I still don't fully appreciate about 11T and. Uh, for that reason, like it seems like a simpler Astro to me, but I think the data cascade is one of its like defining features. Um, yes. That, yeah. It's 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 very powerful, and and I I I, I use the the add global data one like when it was in like in the beta like version of uh, eleven T or like the alpha or whatever because it was just so handy. But the the, the cascade is a is a little bit like it's a little bit confusing, um, but once you understand yeah. it, it's very very powerful. So. In, in this instance, we're actually using 11T computed, which means it kind of happens after the the main box. So we can we can know a bit more like what the page is and like okay. what the file path is and stuff like that. So what we're doing is inside of 11T computed, like kind of afterwards, is adding a view count to the post, to every post. So we're going to okay. add the view count number. So what I'm doing here is going through the... Uh, analytics data so data dot analytics and then inside that data that we do here data, that we get there okay yes because we get a data object right. back um which has got which is actually an array but it's called data as an object and then i find the resource that matches the url so data dot page dot path dot file path stem which is a, is a bit of a weird one and i've had to put a slash on the end because the way Netlify Analytics is returning it is like slash posts, slash third post, slash post, slash cool. fourth post, slash. Um, so this will filter through and find the right one. And if there is nothing, then it will return zero. So there'll be zero view count on it. So Got it. We get nothing. Right. Like um, the tags only showed up once we visited them. Otherwise, they they, they weren't there to start, I don't think. No. No, no, so, no. Well, I, I mean, I think there would be more pages here. There would be more tags for sure, because there should be like tags, posts. Wait, chat like didn't that. click every tag? Oh, uh, okay. All right. Rude. Chat. <laughs> and one job. Um, cool. So, yeah, now we've got this. Now we can go over to the posts template. So, I think if you do post, oh, actually, the post list. So, like ah, post sorry. list or post list. list. Yeah, in the code, um, we want the post list. There it is. There it cool. is. So this is our inside post loop. layout. So just so I kind of have my bearings here. Um, oh yes. This is so posts is a collection. All right. I'm gonna back up a little bit further. So uh, this setup is all defined by me or is 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 posts like a thing that 11t always has to have or do, or do i say i want these things no. to live at slash posts like this? no no so 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 posts is just a created like collection of things but but inherently when you create a directory you kind of you're not actually really making a collection you're just making a, a path and then you put stuff inside it and then that path kind of gets reflected in the build so if you do okay first post.md it'll be slash post slash first post uh, Got it. So it's file based um, routing in other words right like it's yeah yeah cool and then when you create a collection what you do is you kind of label all of them so that's how, that's why tags is there so when you tag everything uh, you'll see it says tags uh, second tag um so that's additional tags okay so um in the uh what is it the posts.11t.js file um You'll see it says tags, so okay. we're just telling all the posts you are posts, and and you reside in the posts collection. Okay, cool. So in in the in the data object, like the big data object of eleven t, it's collections dot posts, and then it's all there, um, and then that kind of happens for all the other tags and everything. Got it. 
Um, and um, Steph Eccles, good to see you. Yeah, you're just in time for some 11 and, and another big 11 Hey. Fan. <laughs> Brilliant, I got support. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so now this is the post loop. We're using good old fashioned nunchucks. I'm a big fan of like the classic like templating code. <laughs> it doesn't get enough love these days. Like, I am not, a, yeah, I'm not a fan, but I, I you know, you know, oh, okay. I sunk my teeth, you know, into JSX for the most part. Uh, like that was like one of my first like real deep dives into web development yeah. in terms of yeah like I, I've I've only been coding for like around five years or six now okay. I have no idea, um but yeah like that was that was like one of my first but be, before that it was stuff like this I just didn't I don't know it didn't click as much as JSX did and so okay. I've, I've been kind of a fan of that where this I get I, I I think that's I think that's interesting it's almost i think it, it could almost be a generational thing like i've been doing this well now it's 13 years which is like oh my god it's some ages um but um uh, i i feel like templating is probably more akin to like the kind of classic html type stuff where you're putting in attributes and values and then chunks of html as opposed to more modern like javascript framework stuff which you're like kind of bundling and kind of chunkifying and like kind of right re, re reconstituting i suppose that's kind of terrible grammar but you're kind of passing in a lot more stuff going on and spitting out a lot larger things um but uh yeah this probably looks a little bit daunting because the, the 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 code's kind of all like compressed together i've written but... lots of twig and stuff though so like i i i do yeah and well and yeah and the formatting is a little it's a little funky but that's that's all good but yeah i, I can yeah yeah kind of make the sense of it so we can see like on the second line for post in post list and then we're re reversing it because it does it in like date order type thing i think so it's doing right. it backwards so we get the newest one first um and we're looping through them and we're doing a bunch of things like putting the post url in the tag and, and like things like that so maybe what we want to do is right after the opening like li so at the end of that line you're on line three put a new line there and what we're going to do is the double curly braces, um, double curlies, um, and we're doing post dot, and let me double check, I get this right, uh, post dot data dot view count, and view count is camel case. Cool. So that should be the number of posts on, the number of views on each post. Okay. So we should be able to go back over to our local instance and is it reloaded or is it crashed it could have crashed it's crashed like it's crashed did not like something we did tags oh it's because we've switched it it needs to be uh, an object oh. um i think what does tags um or is it just because we oh is it oh it's broke because it at the moment we, yeah we, we we broke it when we renamed it probably oh um, that's probably right yeah we yeah, just can't it yank just, posts it, out of there. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. So it's spun back up now, so it should be okay. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. I didn't realize it. It's so fast. I was still waiting on it. There we go. Fifteen, seventeen, ten for uh, Steph and others who just came in. Give us some stuff there. Like, click around. We're using <laughs> analytics. Yeah, I, did, I, I didn't have a good finisher. I started out so strong, and then just yeah. Uh, but cl click around. <laughs> give us some page views because we're. Uh, looking to show those page views here well and more yeah. specifically as a hit counter inside the blog post so 15 17 10 cool it's working yeah so you can actually go into the so we can go over to the post template as well like each of the posts and put that same piece of data so okay we go to uh layouts and there's post and then we can do um i guess uh data dot view count and like put that in there put it even there like as I don't know. I do it as a H two, so we can just see it. Like I know that that's like not not good semantics, but um, yeah. Ben Myers is in chat. They're it. gonna have a uh, oh, a fit. Absolute yep. just that person. Ben is fucking <laughs> on their bad side. That's all I'm saying. Um, Let's get through there. Oh, is it is it not like data? Oh, is it just view count? Did I break don't it? Don't tell me it's just view count. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, page dot date, page dot date. Oh, okay. Do Why page dot data. No, do you? Uh, all right, try that. Yeah, it's view count. Oh, 
Sweet. Sweet, okay. So, yeah, put that, prefix it if you want, put, like, total views or something like that. Yeah, nice, nice. So good. Right. So, you know, like, out of the gate, this is great. And we've done no web components so far. I've realized that we've done none. <laughs> um, but that's what I like about like, doing this kind of web development. Like, this is is workable. Um, yeah. Granted, though, I, I feel like maybe some people have noticed that, like, this is going to be a problem when you want to keep it live. So those 15 page views are not going to be able to keep up with, or a, a build's not going to be able to keep up with the view count, you know? Right. Uh, this 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 blog is like shooting through the roof in views we're already up gonna... to like yeah a couple hundred for sure yeah and obviously we don't want to like bust your uh like paid account on netlify with a build on every single time someone views the site we, we don't really want that do we i um, don't have that kind of cash but yeah like we're doing no. real well look at these look at these numbers see like so we want we want those views but we want to have something a bit more like live without having to make the whole site like rebuild live and like rebuild or like doing like requests like every time um that's where we can wrap this in a web component cool so let's uh maybe we should just push that maybe we should just like All push right. like what we've got because that that it, it works tm um <laughs> it it will do the job um and it will show all the views. And then what we can do is the next bit is, is create, create some extra enrichment. And if we don't get to push it, then that's fine. It's, it's probably good because we're actually going to take that server side or that build time code and put it into a web component effectively. Cool. And we're going to wrap it back up. It's probably already built. I bet you it's like... It's darn close. Yeah. <laughs> it is quite, quite close. And we're live. The All speed. right. So we've got a little counter there, 18 and 18. But now if new people go to these posts, it's not going to change hmm. until the next build, right? Like this is this is frozen yeah. in time now. Yeah. And and that that's that's really workable. We don't really want to like overwrite that. We don't really want to like rely entirely on client side. But maybe we can use client side to kind of bring it up to speed and bring it into something more live and that's how we can introduce web components to just kind of give this an cool. extra boost in in like live activity or or, or, or uh, juice it up shall we say Perfect. <laughs> uh, so let's go back to our project and um we're not going to install lit as like a package we're going to do like wild like point to lit on like um what did i do i think i did it via own package i know that this is like the wild wild west version of doing a doing a <laughs> lit component but i think this is like you know a nice simple one out of the, out is there the a downside to get... installing it with npm no no okay. well that that's how we do it that's how we're doing our like components and like kind of God. bundling up the whole javascript package really like small because our, our javascript package for the entire components is like I think it's like sub 50k like it's it's ridiculously it's like small for like a, a whole like design system um but for the purposes of this i kind of did it like i did it in a script like module like uh tag and then just went for broke in the, in the javascript with a, a lit thing because i started doing it in in a in a code pen so i thought well, perfect let's just go for it yeah makes sense cool so uh what should we did, did you send something to me or... Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, oh, good. Let's just get going. I I have, I have the whole code, but maybe uh, yeah, I'll just give, I'll give you the whole code, and we'll, we'll we'll go from there. Cool. Give you all the answers. Um, oh, and it's got my site ID stuff in it. So <laughs> should I strip that out, or yeah, let me try. Yeah, it too. strip that, strip that out if you can, if you don't mind. So this is going okay. I got it. Um, where am I putting this? So I would put it at before the closing body tag in the base template. So if you go back into your includes directory at the top there. Uh, um, okay. There it is. Layouts. And then there's base. That gets used on every template on every page. So okay. Base, so here. And then, yeah, near the bottom uh, before the closing body tag. 
Got it. There it is. So right underneath there. All right. Dropping that Drop section that of in. it and then dropping. Uh, oh, neat. Tidy. Yeah. So I'm dropping it like two parts and then you're going to try to. Can Can you just edit with the things out? And oh, I'll... let me edit. Let me edit. That it. might be faster that, that than me be... trying to paste and that would... do stuff around. Yeah. I just want to have a note. Uh, note taking app open. Let's do that. Um, uh, site ID, and then we've got. Uh, By the way, for anyone okay. watching, I was completely kidding about Ben. Ben is one of the best people, so <laughs> hope you didn't hope you didn't think I was uh, serious there, anybody. Ben is a semantics professional, but is also very supportive, very uh, patient with me and my constant mistakes around that topic so <laughs> the opposite yeah of, I, 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 I think they do a great job of explaining stuff either, but find finer details I, I like that very much um yes i'm using skype pack actually um so this is our hit counter this is a hit counter and this does very similar to what we were doing on the build side but in the client um yeah so what we've got at the top there we've we're doing it as a script type module so we can do uh, module importing so like all the fancy like new stuff um and we're getting lit element at the top there uh we're getting css and we're getting html and the css and html so html um is the template code like template literal stuff okay get from lit and the css is what you were just selecting there actually so you can do template literals with css um, so it actually gets kind of accepted as proper like CSS. Um, Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then what we do is we um, to produce a component that is our hit counter. We extend the lit element, which is kind of like how you make a regular web component. So you do extends element, but inst instead you're doing extends lit element. So Got it. It's, it's just a little bit on top. So the lit element kind of gives you a little bit extra as much as, as well as the other things inside the package. Is um, it cool if, if I just check out the docs for web components itself? Yeah. Cause, cause just you saying um, like, that's how you create a web component. I've never created a web component. So I'm, I'm really like, using custom elements. So we just extends HTML power. So oh, sorry, yeah. Oh no, it's a you're different. completely fine. No, no, no. So, um, no, you don't have to watch us for anything. I'm, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around like, so web components are like built off of the native HTML components, just with added stuff like in class syntax or whatever you would call that. So like, you you just extend the normal paragraph element. And then add fun stuff that you want in there. That's that's just how it works. Yep, yep. And then huh. and then and then you get to like write the closing and opening and closing tags, and there you go. So you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to type, you know, uh, angle brackets hit dash counter, and then close that tag, and then that's a web component. That's you know, you just write your own custom like HTML element. Um, the the most the most powerful thing about this is that it works really well for design systems. This is kind of like why we're why we're using it for our design system. Right. It, it you would probably use it in conjunction with other frameworks, so you get the whole kind of single page application experience and kind of that big developer experience that people want. Um, but at a kind of micro component level, um, lit and web components themselves work really nicely for creating those little like precise components that developers need that like inputs and uh text areas with the label and like those little things like where one of the one a couple of the examples that we've got on our stock site is um a drop down with the drop down items uh, and being able to position that drop down um like a date picker that's like feels like native to the application God, uh, right. but you don't have to deal with those date pickers that have that are kind of admittedly a bit inconsistent at the minute and kind of hard to wrangle on different browsers. So okay, so yeah, cool, cool. I I I won't slow us down anymore. Um, and just in case, uh, 
in case you have questions, chat, make sure you tag him with wonder because we're, we're, we're getting quite a little bit of a collection here. Um, so make sure you give us some more. And, and David, Aaron, thank you for coming through. Uh, make sure I'll, I'll try to get your questions to hand delivered to you because you asked a couple and I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, good, good to see you as always. Um, okay, cool. So we've got this script module. We're importing HTML, CSS, and lit element. It's really interesting to see this because I'm, I'm familiar with this. Like this is how like styled components and, and other CSS in JS style things operate. So it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see this. Um, well, this, th that, yeah. this is because the APIs are kind of converging together in the kind of almost like, a, whether that be a, a active consensus or kind of like natural consensus, but um, we do it pretty much like this, but, but actually what we do instead of the CSS part there, we, we actually uh, send through uh, a imported dot css file so all our components have just got a regular like got dot it. css file okay. against them and um host acts as effectively root so like the modern like css selector of colon root which is right. like the, the top very top element so in this case host is that very same thing but it's the top of the element the sorry the component so the very top of that so we can like select anything within that you don't actually have to Put it but it's quite good for applying uh custom properties and stuff like that to it cool. so say you want to put some stuff very top level um but you can actually delete that part you've got selected there and just style the paragraph because of okay. style encapsulation the paragraph is only going to get styled with that border got it. um so yeah and then what we're doing is setting up uh static properties so this property is going to be like an attribute on the actual component um, and it's called slug. And that means that we can pass in the slug of the blog post. So we cool. can like show it and like get that information rather than, I don't know, getting it from window.location or something like that. Got it. And then constructor, like we're doing super and 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 um, I won't go into that because that's kind of pretty like fairly like standard stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've got, we're setting a count of like zero out of the gate. Uh, we're setting an initial value of a slug of nothing. Cool. We could put something there, but I'm just going to put a string. Um, and then this is our like get analytics method uh, or uh, method. I'm I'm starting to get naming naming conventions different. Sure, <laughs> but uh, yeah, function. Yeah. I'm I'm also bad with that like the precise language kind of thing. I should should be better, but I'm not. It's all good. Well, I I, 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 see, I seem to remember I got method from marionette, like doing marionette, like as a, as a, a, a JavaScript. Like, yeah, like old school, like JavaScript. Oh, I'm uh, not even, that, that name does not even ring a bell. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's all well, good. I, I thought you were telling me about how as a boy, you would play with marionettes and that was... That was as a where boy, you I did, <laughs> did yeah. play with marionettes. <laughs> Mended marionettes <laughs> with a bucolic view ahead of me. <laughs> Did you call that countryside, mother? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. So this is an async to to get the the analytics data. So we're doing it on the client. Granted, yes, we shouldn't be doing this data like these keys on the client, but we can wrap this up later, or we could even wrap up that API in a Netlify function, Netlify function create yeah. our own like tight like API and just provide like some data to the to the client side so we can like manipulate that and present that on the page um so yet yeah, we're doing that and then connected callback is uh basically the browser going our component exists it it is there it's it's calling back to say i exist now rather than it not existing because when you write a web component like you do the tag which we'll do in a moment. Okay. And you don't do any like JavaScript or anything like that. It does do something, but it it doesn't really know that it's a component yet. So it <laughs> this stuff kind of helps us. Like you'll see at the bottom, it says define it, so we can define the hit counter and say it exists as a component on the page. So when the browser is aware of it actually being a component, we do the super thing to kind of uh, get it going, and then um, we do the this dot get analytics and i'm doing a then because it's a promise and 
we are doing exactly what we were doing inside of the Elementi code. So we're filtering through the data, finding the relevant data of like the resource matching to get the count. And then we do a dot request update to update the component with that count. Or we're just, you know, telling the component that's the only thing that's going to update that that count. Got it. Um, now, I, I, I'm I sure people will say there's probably a tighter way of doing this and a more appropriate way of doing this, but it proved but to be... But no one else is on the show, so they don't, it's, that's fine. It's not... This is, this is your show, Dave. This is your <laughs> show, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that makes sense. I feel like I'm blasting through this at like a million miles an hour. But hopefully it... it I'm, it, I'm going to go back through it and just make sure I'm getting my head wrapped around it. And uh, yeah, I will yeah, check chat to it. make sure that they don't have questions. So I wonder, does the CSS become an inline style tag place next? Ooh, that, that's a good question. So does the CSS... Um, yeah, like how does this get processed? Does this become an inline style tag placed next to the markup or is there something else weird going on with, with web components? It's it's a style, it's an inline style, but it's inside the shadow DOM. So it'll okay. be a block of CSS inside of the shadow DOM element that applies to all those things in there. So that CSS is contained within it. And I I posted a couple of articles actually the day that was about the performance of it. And it's actually quite performant once you start getting quite large scale with the amount of components on the page. So say you're doing a large application, the performance of it is actually quite fast because of the the DOM encapsulation and the kind of repetitive nature of components, okay. it starts becoming quite performant. I mean, for one or two, it, but it starts kind of getting like into the weeds of like the performance of it. But the encapsulation is like really nice because that's that's kind of like why one of the reasons why we do these kind of component things for style encapsulation and kind of making sure that stuff doesn't leak out and nothing like leaks into the component. So. Um, I, I, yeah. I do realize it's a complete like complete discussion that we could have an entire show about by itself, but I do find it interesting. And then, and then we'll leave it because we've, we've got to move um, <laughs> that we are like pushing against the cascade in a sense with, with these sorts of things. We're like, mm. we're, 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 we're blocking off the cascade. We, we don't want it with our components. And yeah, like it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I didn't have anything more than just like, that's not cascade. But yeah, I just wanted mm. to say that where I think that that is interesting. Is it well? Is there any way to get any kind of cascade with with web components or? Well, the, the, the I mean, the, the I think there is like an inheritance level with with like kind of slotted children inside of it because they reside at like the top level as well. So in in a web component, you can have slotted items, and we're going to wrap our hit count with it with it and you'll see there's like a slot there and that's cool. kind of resides at like a higher level uh like in the same way that other elements kind of do that so, you know like picture element and um right uh uh what else was it details and summary and stuff like that so you do get a level of like inheritance there um but custom css custom properties is the way to like get those inherited styles in there so you can like pull those th into it so you can say oh well, i want to inherit the font i want to inherit this so you can actively like turn it on and like kind of try and pull it in or do what we are doing and kind of precisely allow inheritance and then people set those values which we find not only is uh it can be really powerful but it's also more appropriate i feel like it's more appropriate to have those custom properties that are like specific to those components because when you component authoring you're kind of going i'm intentionally creating an element i'm intentionally creating something for this purpose and so i want to only open up this css this xyz css as opposed to like an input that just inherits stuff or uh, a paragraph that inherits a bunch of stuff you know got the, it. those are kind of appropriate for those use cases got it okay yeah it's 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 interesting yeah um my yank says uh they have mixed feelings about CSS and the shadow DOM. Um, and I, I think Mike might be saying same to that or maybe same to what you just said, but I'm not sure. Either, either way, it's 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 interesting just to see how that uh, mm. that's playing out. Because I feel like a lot of proponents of like classic CSS in a sense of like the cascade and just like 
I don't know, more old school CSS, if that makes sense. Like not utility classes, not CSS in JS are, are enjoying uh, web components, lit, this sort of thing. But then it's interesting to see this that this way of doing CSS, but I do want to get, I, I want to make progress on this and maybe we can chat about it at the end. Uh, cause yeah, I, sure. I, I realized yeah. the whole like philosophical thing about, uh, <laughs> yeah. web components and everything here. Um, so I'm going to run through it and try to explain it. If I get it wrong, would love to get corrected. Um, these are just little helpers that like take in yeah. strings and then write that in the way that it needs to be written. And then lit element is kind of like the lit way of extending uh, an, in in element, like a DOM element uh, to create a web component. Uh, we create our CSS here. This is like props in React where we can say what, mm -hmm. what we want it to take. Um, and the constructor, this is kind of like when, uh, so I'm, I'm going to relate everything to React. So I hope you're at least really familiar. Yeah, no, sure. I think cool. people will find that probably more Awesome. Relevant if that people are familiar with React. Already. Yeah. So this is like just setting the initial variables, or or maybe mm -hmm. e even like a, uh, a a use effect, or like an on mount in Svelte or something, where it's like this is right. what's happening at, at at the start of this, right? Like this is the the mm -hmm. base values here. Um. Then we're just fetching data. That's kind of JavaScript standard. Uh. And then this connected callback. It's just reminded me very much of like I think therefore I am like I need to prove I exist <laughs> kind of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just like uh, <laughs> I'm I'm making this call, therefore I I am a thing that exists. And if I don't make this call, I don't exist. I'm like, damn, so true, so true. <laughs> um, okay, so this just lets it it. I, I'm not sure what this lets know that it exists, though. It, it lets the DOM. Uh, the I wonder browser? if there's a better like explanation in in on the lit.dev like site. Like maybe there's a kind of more explanatory. Um... Okay, but 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 this is just basically what yeah. it like. It registers itself as, "Hey, I'm available. Yeah. If if anyone calls out for my name, I'm your guy. Come come get me. Like I'm I'm over here." Uh, and then this get analytics data. So yeah, and then this is just some JavaScript to loop through our specific thing. It's not a web components thing, but this is what uh, allows this web component to kind of be called anywhere in our HTML. And then it's put where it needs to be. And then this is what we return. And we have this mm -hmm. slot that we're allowing for something later to be to be placed here. But I get, yep. but but this isn't necessary if we just wanted to return the number in a paragraph tag. We would just do this. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. And and then and then this is saying, hey, this is my name, so I exist, and my name is hit counter. If you see hit yep. counter anywhere, come get me. And then that is the class there. So we are linking those two together. And I think that's about it, right? Like that's that's kind of it. Um, yeah, some, somebody in the chats put the connected callback from from MDN, which is quite awesome. handy. I was I was actually looking on um, lit.dev, and I guess it's the thing. It's just when when the component's added to the documents DOM, like when cool. it's when it's good to go. Awesome. All right. So th this makes sense to me, Chad. If you have any more questions, let us know. Drop them in with, as an I wonder. Thank you for doing that, Anthony, um, and uh, and Dave Latore. Good, good to see you. Um, so we, we will definitely catch those before we drop. I, I just want to make sure we're, we're, we're moving forward because I have, I have a habit of stopping and asking questions about little tiny things. So I want to make sure we're making progress. So we, we, we've got this set now. What do we want to do? How do we get this showing up? So let's, so we've got that, we've got the script there. So now yeah. what we want to do is go over to where our hit count of values are. So let's go to, yeah, let's go to here um and you don't have to delete that you ah, i wanted that to right but okay. there <laughs> well you can if you want but like, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to put hit dash counter as a tag so hit dash counter tag and then inside that you could put the view count so like the double curly braces no 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 sorry no no not like that like actually between the the tags oh um yeah so we're putting view count right okay. in the middle there and then there, where you were just typing, actually, uh, we can put a um, an attribute 
So put an attribute on the um, no 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 like on the on the cool. opening tag. That's it. Um, slug and then equals and then we can do. I think we can just do curly braces and slug because this will come up from eleven t. Um, um, do I do I have to? Uh, you, do, uh, you, you need the, how you how need many? The... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but you do need the quote marks. I know you're okay, thinking cool. React. Uh, yeah, like well, again. every every language has its rule of like, ah, this one's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so so we're, we're in like, we're pretty like close to like native like HTML. So we need the little it. like, little like quotes. So we want to put, I think we just put slug, but, oh no, URL. Do you see we've got like, um, we've got like tag. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, we've tag got like, URL? URL there. No, 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 just okay. URL. Cool just url and then we can save that and then let's let's have a look let's let's see because this is client side this is gonna like hopefully the magic will occur oh there's something is that so it got, 29 zero yeah because yeah, that's that's the real thing or like that's, that's my h2 number. um and then that is zero so maybe that po has that post been viewed yet Maybe it's not. I don't know. It's gonna be hard because we we probably don't have a lot of new people to to do it with. You know what I mean? So like that is what's um, cached. If anyone who has oh, it but yet, it's just underneath. That's what it is. It's just underneath um, the. So you'll see it says twenty nine zero underneath. So that's our web component. So maybe we should check in the console whether our web component's doing uh, getting upset. Yeah, so the uh, oh. API, it's not getting the slug. So maybe that URL is not URL. So why don't we inspect uh, the HTML? What was the, wait, where do we put? Here's our module. The Okay, slug type string, got it. So that's what we are passing in. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're doing what? Sorry? Let's, let's inspect the HTML in, in, in the browser and see what actually is being put as the slug and whether we got that value right. So it's hit counter. Oh, you see above it, it says hit counter and then slug and there's not a value for it. So it's huh. not URL. So maybe right. it's, maybe it's, maybe it's page dot slug or slug. It We're must just be something. Try until we find something. That's just no. still slug inspect. Hmm. Um, is it not tag URL? No, because that's no, that, that us to yeah. the tag. Yeah, so um, maybe page dot URL because we haven't tried that one. <laughs> we did <laughs> try. It, I not just yeah tag. Oh, and then cool. yeah yeah. There we go. Nice. Bam. Okay. Oh, we got okay, it. Cool. Got it. So okay. what we could do is we could take that slot away now and get rid of that. The old twenty nine. Okay. So chat might not realize what's happening because I didn't realize what was happening. This is uh, us passing it in from 11. So this is like the cached stuff. But then mm -hmm. the second one without the excitement is the one we're fetching from. We're, we're fetching client side. So that's the that's new it. one. Yep. yep. Cool. Let me see if anyone has uh, gone to. Okay. Every, it seems like every post has the, the same amount. Yeah, the, the, they're all matching. But you, you do see it goes 0 and then 13 mm -hmm. because we're passing in that slug. Awesome. Okay, cool. But we're still going to want to pass it a view count, right? So that it it, it, it stays static. Just yes, might be. yes. Okay, cool. We want to put in, I, I, I would put it in, keep it inside in between those tags as just the, the view count um, just so you've got a number that comes up when it loads. Cool. And then when it's, ready to go because what we'll do is we can remove the slot because the Got slot it. is rendering uh no we don't want to remove the slot i'm sorry we don't want to remove the slot we want to maybe we want to like when the count is above zero replace the slot like kind of do that um and right and, and return it so you could um yeah so, so maybe... how do we how do we do that with oh just with like uh hey hey yes right so this dot count and then you could do if it's like like is greater than zero and if that's true 
do the slot, but you'll need to do, I think you need to do HTML again with the back ticks. Oh, like really? You can't just return it into the template? Like well, you let's can. find out. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're, we're just going to, yeah, we're going to roll with this. Um, and then, so if it's if it's greater than zero, you show the slot. Or if, if it's, no, if, it's, if, it, if it equals zero, we should show the slot. Because that should be just cached data. Okay, got it. And then if it's greater than zero... Then yeah, we, like, we, we, we always want to show the fresh even though they might be the same. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I guess I guess if it was if it was zero, then there's no point in making the request almost. Uh you are right. It seemed to break something. Or something didn't Ooh. something didn't like something else. Alright, let's see if I it's gonna nest all these HTML things. Oh, it's fine. Ooh. Still doesn't like it. What doesn't it? What does it like? Does it not like? There's no space after the back tick. And be, the, hey, okay. I don't know. Um, HTML this count equals zero. What's chat saying? Um, hey Ryan, good to see you, buddy. Um, JavaScript only runs on page loads. Ternary syntax. Oh, he's oh. right. They're Thank right. They're you, right. Sorry, me, me, yeah. yeah. Appreciate you. I'm, I'm going to drop the HTML off again. Just I I think it just yeah, is it. expecting a string. Nope. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It, it definitely needs. Definitely needs that. <laughs> slot, uh, slot. Um, All right, cool. Perfect. We don't even see it. Um, <laughs> don't even see what's happening. That's great. So I guess, I guess, uh, yeah. So. Excited 14 uh, turns into oh, just chill 14. And then, yeah. Awesome. That's so that expected. works perfectly. So just once again, chat, what's happening is slot, this aspect is what we're passing in. It's kind of like children in React uh, or slot in pretty much anything else. Um, and that's the, the cache view count that was fetched on build. But then we are calling for, no, no, not there. We're calling here to get fresh data from Netlify and display that. So once it comes back, we display the up to the minute count. And if you want to be part mm -hmm. of that up to the minute count, please go to the world's hottest new blog, bucolicplotipus.netlify.app. It is, honestly, I'm hearing so much about this blog. I can't just think like the past two hours, I've heard it like 10, 20 times. Just people loving this site. So. I mean, it, I think it's already going to be on Rotten Tomatoes by the end of the day. So people if, are going to have I've, opinions. I've, I've heard good things. I'm ho hoping it does as well as the Nord Health design system, but we, we will see. Oh, we'll oh, see. I see. I see what's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> We're here to compete. It's a, it's a um, small competition. All right. So we've got our, <laughs> got, got our hit counter. That's working well. Um, we're getting that bit of enhancement. So like, even if there's no JavaScript, we're still showing that count. But if there is JavaScript, we can make that additional fetch and show an up-to-date uh, count. And yeah, that's that's fantastic. So now what do we yep. want to do to this or, or with well, this? Well, there's a few things that we can do. Yeah. One of the things is we can litter our site with this component now. We can Perfect. just reuse that tag just as is, and we can put it on the post list view because we got the numbers on the post list view. Let me get real um, sloppy with it. Yeah, just get that copy and paste action happening. I, I do really like that I don't have to remember to import hit counter anywhere. No. That part's nice. It's done. Yeah. It's done. You you've got your script, like, or if it was a you know a big application, you'd do the import. Um in fact, I think in view you don't even have to like import it because views kind of smart about that. Yeah. yeah, it's just there. Um but yeah, so was it post.data on line four? On line four, you've got the post right. data, so you can wrap that in your tag. Um, yeah, just do the old swap. Um, that's it. Yeah, nice. And wrap that. And then instead of, is it? It's post URL instead of page URL now because the the object is post. Right. But that should do the same So this thing. is on posts list. Mm -hmm. Ka archives 32 23 man people are people love my fourth post my first one uh i was i was getting warmed up all right that's all it was second one not bad not bad better 
Third starting to take off, almost doubled, and then wow. Fourth post is really <laughs> where it's at. Um, I just, if you just switch back to the to the inspector, like yeah, just reload, you'll see the ooh. body like flash for him for a couple of times then and then i think that's the dom updating but so on, look. if you if you we're, yeah we're getting numbers. you see that and it just updates it and that's inside the shadow root as well so you can see like everything kind of happening inside of there um there should be like a css block as well but i guess it's not showing here's it. host p border yeah oh i guess it's just in there in the constructed style sheet um so so we can do that. Another thing we can do, we can actually style the hit counter. Uh, we can do that in multiple ways. So we can either um, style inside the shadow DOM and give it all the kind of niceties, like we do that old school hit counter, and maybe do flames or, yeah, uh... <laughs> or do the old school numbers and stuff. But we can also style the surround of it. So we can just use hit counter as a selector in, in your main CSS file and point to it. Perfect. Oh, um, yeah, chat. We were we were having fun trying to decide which of these we try to mimic. I don't know. Bones are pretty cool. Which one of these <laughs> chat s says bucolic platypus to you? Because I don't know. It might be the Uno cards. It might be this. No, it's not that. Chocolate. I'm, 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 chocolate I'm hoping chocolate. This waffle. <laughs> yeah, we're we're all crossing fingers for chocolate on this one. Um, well, that is that's pretty nice. That we yeah. can pull that one off. Humble. Hearts it's, it's the lipstick. Bucolic, if you ask me. <laughs> oh my! Oh my god! Oh my god! This one is. This one is not okay. That's a bit. That's a bit wild. Women yeah. as numbers. That is not okay. Oi. Um. Yeah. So we're not doing that one, chat. And then the chocolate was so nice they decided to show it twice. You could either do that one. <laughs> <laughs> they're like. They might miss the first time that we show the chocolate, so we should probably put it to it. Maybe, yeah, maybe one is chocolate and one is <laughs> the other thing. dark chocolate, uh, milk chocolate. Uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, dark dark chocolate. Yeah. I don't know. What do you th What do you think? What are we going for? Um, I'm I'm fr I I will say we might have a bit of an issue with like importing fonts, and I, I worry that we might it might get a little. That's bit a good hairy. point. Can we just do? Yeah, um, can we just rely on CSS for it for the most part? The lipstick. Yeah, one? let's let's um. What's the lipstick I, one? I, That's... I think we should do some surround yeah. styling on the actual component, like okay. uh, the tag. So uh, if you um, let's try to do this glowy uh, one or something like it. You could do that with we could you do that with CSS filter? Like, yeah. And do was it a CSS filter drop shadow? Yeah, I think really we can do that one pretty easy. Layer it up. Cool. You you want to try it? Um, yeah, let's let's give it a let's give it a spin. Um, if we go over into the sidebar, there's a CSS directory. There should be some nice. uh, typical like CSS in there. Um, we can yes, here we go. Uh, maybe we can just find somewhere near the end to like style hit counter. So it's literally just hit counter hit dash counter. And then maybe we put a, a red border on it just to kind of establish that this is even possible to do. The classic, this, that's the CSS debug mode that is red, get a whack of red border on it. I've, oh, I've, been, really, I've been very vocal about this lately, so I, I, I need to stick to my guns. Okay. Um. okay. <laughs> Personally, I would have put crimson, but you know. Uh, so I've heard, yeah, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. There you it go. It's working. So that's the surround of the the hit counter, and you'll notice that I think is oh thank you yeah um is I think it applies immediately because e even if the component's not like mounted or anything, it's still a valid like selector. It's like just like a kind of unique tag hit counter, so it's not a real like element yet. But then when our lit or JavaScript code kicks in, then it becomes like a real component and it starts doing all the stuff it was meant to do. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So. So you can do all the styling like around this. So we could put like a nice border on it, make it look like nice and kind of presentable. Um, and then maybe like animate or something like inside the um inside the CSS like template literal kind of part for the for the actual component itself. So we could kind of flash it up when it's kind of styled and, and ready to go. Yeah, in base. So in that CSS like template Got literal it. kind of tag part. 
What can we uh, put? And I guess you can do multi-line because it, it's a, it's back ticks, so you can kind right. of put returns in there, no problem. Do we want to put it inside the P still? Uh, so the so the P is is like what's actually in the element further down in in the render function, right. but you you could do you can make that anything you want so you, but is, you could make that is there anything more than the paragraph tag where's my sidebar did i lose my sidebar where did my sidebar uh, go? uh oh was it somewhere is it it's, is it popped oh, okay so say it's fine i don't need dev tools who needs dev tools um all right so it's hit counter and then inside hit counter We've got the shadow root and then side shadow root, we got the paragraph. So hit counter essentially you said acts kind of like a div and just that it's just a generic. It element. just kind of, yeah, just like a generic tag. Okay. Um yes, um someone's mentioned about the defined pseudo class to like progressively enhance it. Oh, cool. So that so that's a selector for when the web component gets defined. We actually use that in reverse um in our applications because um we don't want the component to render if it's not ready to go because we're inside a kind of javascript application it's quite kind of running complex stuff if that component's not ready to go we'll use not defined so colon not that's the one yeah not defined so we'll, cool. we'll select select any element that's not or component that's not been defined yet and hide it away um, and we have that in our framework code okay wait 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 so hold on in your I... regular css yeah, I can just go like star not defined. Not? No, no, not even star. Like just not defined because it's a it's it's a selector. So colon not brackets colon defined, and then you can do like display none or something. Oh yeah, or paste t zero something like that. And then, and then if I refresh, yeah. it only kicked in later because oh wow. Yeah. And then we could we could animate that if we wanted to. You could like right. do the opacity like kind of like and then do defined and then do opacity one. Well, I mean, you oh, don't no. even need to because yeah, yeah. it's just gonna be the default. Yeah, right? do that. Yeah. Do transition uh, like two S or yeah, that's it. Ease in or something. Yeah. Cool. Bam. Get a little bit of um jumping around but you know we're just we're not too worried about this right now but we, we would handle I it suppose a little bit what's better ha i what's happening is the paragraph's not there yet that's probably why there's a pop because the par that's why it's so tall because i think it's got the paragraph margins on the top and bottom of it oh, okay got it so we could switch it to a span and then that would kind of close it up around it around itself it's probably more appropriate to have Let's it as a span go for it i'm impressed the auto tag Completed that. Yeah, nice. Got it. Now, okay, perfect. Good call on the paragraph. Awesome. All right, so that that's pretty cool. And then, um, all right, so you got this transition. It's coming in. We need to make uh, background black. Um, text or, or just color white. No. Ah, so I'll be interested to know what, what's going to happen because I don't think. Ah, that... we need to like. Let's, well, let's see. Let's see because it it... Okay. Oh, it does it does inherit it, I guess because the thirty three. Hmm. Maybe there's some kind of inheritance thing happening there. So maybe we're getting some inheritance. I'm not actually fully understanding that, but I think Interesting. maybe because we're actually hit targeting the hit counter itself, like specifically. Got it it's getting those things so if you were to put on like root or something these color these styles then the component probably won't inherit those things as, as much as it as it should do interesting or would normally huh um let's go a little too much okay. Just throwing things at the wall do you do you do you, do you have any kind of styles for this that you worked out by chance <laughs> I don't actually. I didn't get this far. I got this. I got this far, and I thought, great, good this, enough. This works, and now we can like figure out how to like make a component. That's like, perfect. I thought. I thought we do the do like a black background. You do the glowing text, and then maybe like a a, a rounded edge that's like chrome edge on it. Ah, now Ooh. I don't think that's going to work. 
you have no? to do that inside the web component because you're targeting uh, a, a shadow dom something element. in the shadow that, dom yeah 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 that that's what that would do is that would target excuse me a span that is in your outside. template code right wrapped so yeah did that did you apply that did it do actually do anything it did, did not do anything did you are correct no. it just uh it just stayed yeah because i i, I want to put the glow there. on that yeah yes but if there was a, if that 33 that we wrapped um yeah that one if that had a span around it and it was at top level then that probably would inherit those styles oh okay that makes sense because it's it, that that's so. the span exists at the same plane so but that it. span is inside the shadow dom all right, so we have to put it um, so here. What... We have to put this these styles here. Yeah. Now that start, that feels like it starts to get a little bit hairy because I'm like splitting my styles across different things. So is it better just mm -hmm. to write all of this in the element itself, or that's how we do it? That's okay. how but we have it, it in a .css like file way. and we import it all into there. Got but but it. what what you could do is you could kind of create a mixture, so then you get like a kind of you could almost do it like black and white as like static. And then when it when it comes live, it's like colorful and it's there. God. Okay, so black and white here, and then here yeah. it kind of lights up and, and the glow comes in. It's kind of it's yeah, you, what you mean. yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right, so span border pixel solid white. We're getting that. Uh, how do we want to do? Let's just Google it. Um, glow. Uh, yeah, effect. you want to do. Oh no, you want to do um, filter drop shadow. All right, cool. That's the CSS filter for it. Um, so filter, yeah, filter colon drop dash shadow and then like zero, zero, zero. And then, uh, uh, wait, zero, zero. Oh no, not, not hex color. So zero space, zero space. Ah. Um, and then I think like three pixels and then... Um, like what like do like tomato or something and see if that comes up i like your style below. I, I i don't have this syntax memorized at all so ah we're getting a little bit of it chat i don't think you can see it but it's a little bit of tomato in that yeah so what you what i think you could do is is if you duplicate the whole drop shadow like function you could probably make it more glowy because it would layer it would stack up the glow Got it. So, like, duplicate that. I not. I don't know if you can compound. Is it getting? Well, oh, it is. Yeah. Yes. I'm getting Breaking yes. Bad vibes. <laughs> chat, right? Like, that is very much the Breaking Bad. Uh... Oh, close. Yeah, close. we're getting there. I mean, you know, numbers, letters, same thing, but. I I admit. Could almost do it like twenty four, like the the like the show. The show, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's time to cook, <laughs> uh, uh Cool. We get under this in inner border. All right, so we're getting that uh, font. Font weight is we're gonna go with like a six hot red. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. All right, so got this very very ridiculous <laughs> like um do we want to not have it fade in though i feel like that um yeah because Get then it that. doesn't work if it's um like in the progressive enhancement aspect right like it's not so maybe the maybe the font size you can apply there so it yeah. doesn't get that pop of font size and um, font weight i wonder how the inheritance happens there it might not Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Can you transition a filter? I don't think you can. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can? can. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but what you can do is do that inside the component. Because cause what will happen is it will, it will fade in from, like, rendering. So, like, from nothing to, to existence, it will fade. So, you can do transition, yeah, filter. That's it. Ease in. Uh, oh, maybe we have to put an initial state um, and do keyframes. Yeah, what, what, I'm curious what it, what it does if we do it there, though. 
Just curious to see the result. Yeah, can you no. transition filters? I think you can, but you, I think we're going to have to put an initial state for the filter, like of nothing, like drop shadow, like zero, nothing. Okay. So um, like drop shadow zero, zero, zero or something. So what you could do is, yeah, do that. Um, that's it. Yeah, nice. Um, but what we do it is we do keyframes. So we'll do a little bit of CSS keyframes. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Syntaxes. Yep. Oh, good. Uh, and then perfect. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, or, you know, we can just do two, right? No, I do. I do from because then the the default state is the drop shadow with it applied, and do from as the as the kind of preloading state. So I do thought... the from. Okay. Oh, oh. So we should bring this down here too, or because this is bring the that one down that into we there. Get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, okay. bring that down into the into there, but put from it instead of to. Um, and then put that in there, and then take out the the other one, and just leave it at that. So just have the yeah, and then put that on the span. So what it is is that it's deep. That's its default state, but it's going to animate from that filter. Got it. Uh, forwards. Is that it? Oh yeah, to stop it repeating itself yeah and, and you put it to stay at the end one second mm. filter um what are the other properties i'm looking for uh ease i think yeah. if you do it like if you do once it, it you don't have to worry about the forwards because what's happening is it's going to animate from that state to it to its kind of current state oh yes true i think we're good though oh, it's, that's a little, working it's, really it's a little well. it's a little like the the animation's not great. Could you use with like an animation guru or something to to kind of give it a bit of sprinkle or a, a blessing, but it's fine. Yeah, it works. It's I I there. would do. So what you could do instead is in the filter keyframe animation instead of doing from, do it so it goes brighter and then back to its normal state. So do in, re change from to yeah. zero percent. And then do um, do the next one is like seventy five percent, and then do the filter to the drop shadow to be bigger than what it is there. Cool. So like a kind of like uh, yeah six, and then hopefully it all kind of it did a little bit, but my my, bit my 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 color got bad. So uh, I'll go back to lime. I went to teal, but teal is not bright enough. Nice. Okay. I still over time. Nice. Yeah, maybe it needs to be like five pixels or something. Yeah, I was gonna like... crank that down. Yeah, exactly. Not bad. We we could tweak that all day, but <laughs> so what's happening here is we are. Yeah, so. I'm trying to walk through like the the in, in, initial steps, and then we can get to questions. Um. Basically, the the class declaration here. Well, oh, actually, actually, you know what? I'm curious. View source. Um, curious what it got like rendered as, because oh, it's still. God, yeah. it, it didn't. It, it didn't get like built or anything. And you know what? Um, nope, we can no probably. Build. Yeah, let's. Uh... You could put that in a scripts.js if you wanted to like oh because it, th this this isn't going to change once it's built because it's just part of the base got it okay yeah. I, I was i was expecting to see like an, an output kind of thing but that that's totally fine mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so this is exactly what i'm looking at over here uh but basically that runs and declares hit counter in the window or whatever i say I, I still don't have a great grasp on that but that's fine and then I can use that anywhere, and it just I can run JavaScript in there. Um, yeah, I, I, I've I've got questions around like passing data around. Like, are, the, does lit come with like ways to have a global data or data stores? Like, like we had Redux and all all kinds yeah. of different data solutions. Does lit have something like that? So lit, we don't use it in that sense. We actually. Okay. 
we would actually lean towards using things like that. So like those larger frameworks to kind of bring Got all it. those components together. Okay. The, the, we, what we utilize um, lit for is the specific kind of component usage. When, when it comes to like passing data around, there are some cases where we do do that, but that's because we need to do like things like a drop down component or something where we need to communicate between a button and the kind of rest of the component, shall we say. So like a drop down, Oh, we've got like a pop out that interacts with a button and things like that. But we, what we do is we, we go up to the root level, um, which is the, you know, the, the, the main page and get the, um, and get the element from there. And we use kind of, um, attributes to kind of target each other. Yeah. In, in fact, the one I'm talking about is the pop out component, which will probably be near the bottom. Um, alphabetically. So I, yeah, there we go um so in the in the code you'll see the example code underneath we actually create a relationship using aria so we've got aria controls example on the button which is inside that stack that you've just selected so there's like aria controls um in that button there and it controls the example uh, and it has an aria has pop-up um and then the pop-out has been id'd as example and that's how it creates that relationship. But we're doing like DOM selection basically to kind of like make that that relationship. But like passing data around, that would be something you would use other like tooling to like okay. when you're producing like a real like application as opposed to like these standalone components. Got it. Now I think it's really cool. Like maybe I've just been in React land too much, but um, is it part of like the web components ethos or just like the way that you generally build to lean a lot more on the platform where like uh, for aria controls example like like this this is proper and everything but i i can see a lot of developers just kind of like making a ref and doing like other kinds of things where here it's like well yeah it's already built into the web why why are you going out and making something new so i feel like that's kind of a benefit here is is that yeah, I think Accurate. I think I think so. I think I think uh, it, it leans towards that, but it, like we can tend to do that anyway. It kind of goes hand in hand quite nicely, as opposed to like reinventing stuff, which admittedly some frameworks tend to end up doing. Yeah. It, it, it's granted, like why? Like I, I get why because stuff isn't quite what you would hope it to be. Yeah. But we we like to to be quite close to what what will the final results be in fact we spend a lot of time looking at open ui um the site to like find out how stuff's going to get created like dialogue um element we try to like match up to that as much as possible and like things like drop downs and pop-ups and stuff like that we try and like match that as best as we can because someday we want it to be superseded <laughs> so we just cool. have to like put the html in uh and we don't even need a script tag to like get our thing spin spun up got it that's so cool um we only have a couple minutes left so i do want to get two questions this uh absolutely flew it's been awesome um all right so let me just turn off studio mode and turn on shoot one second seem to pull up the thing that lets me hover over it i wonder there we go interact cool all right so uh david aaron asked uh how do you share common styles between components so what we do is we have like a component css file and, and we do this for a couple of other components like tech uh, text fields and things like that where we'll just have i don't know component.css and we'll reuse that throughout and we just um tie that to that static styles like declaration inside of the component class creation um and you can assign like it as an array so you can set like multiple sets of styles so we we do component and then we'll do the component specific styles on top so you get that kind of nice overriding experience where you go okay well this is the component css uh, and now we want to put the specific components styles on top of that and do some like little bit of overwriting and stuff like that. So um, cool. that's we find that quite elegant and um, we make use of that quite a lot. We even do that to, uh, well, we were considering to do that for like sharing other variables that we don't want in our design tokens, like like little kind of helper styles and stuff like that. 
Got it. All right. That makes sense. Very cool. And uh, I think you answered David's question perfectly. So I can say <laughs> nailed it. There you would be thrilled. Um, lit versus enhance. Give me your hottest oh. hot take, Anthony says. I Well, I, this this is probably going to be a really cold take because I don't know what enhance is. <laughs> hot I'm take. Not... Wow. Wow. David Darns hates enhance. I never would have... <laughs> Never would have guessed. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. I, it I, it came out like Friday. It's it's yeah. It's <laughs> funny. I I never felt what, uh, like it's been a joke for a while where it's like oh, uh, you know, there's so many JavaScript frameworks. I'm like I don't really feel like there is. Now I'm starting to be like yeah, there kind of, it kind of feels like there is. There's 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 a lot. Um, it it, do, it does look cool though. Me Me Yang just posted a uh, let me bring it up the link to the docs. Um, and it is web standards based HTML framework and is built, I oh, think, around. I've, I've seen the logo now and I recognize the logo as opposed yeah. to the name, which is typical me. Um, yes, I'm the yes, same way. Though. I did see this. It was quite, it's quite, quite interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nice. Maybe something I, to check you know, out I'm... next time. Hmm. Cool. Oh. So uh, you you heard it here first. David Darns thinks Enhance is going to absolutely crash and burn. Um, shame you can't take that back. Uh, all right. <laughs> Code Red Digital. David Lazori says, uh, how does the CSS work if there are multiple instances of a component on a page? Is the CSS just duplicated multiple times? Um. I, there, there is an article um, that I've read that goes into this uh, far more uh, elegantly than I can, and I, I, I feel like that essentially it, 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 it does because it's using Shadow DOM to like repeat that component, and then there's like a style tag inside of it. Right. Um, but I, I have an article um, about yeah, it's style scoping. So I'm going to, I will send that to yourself so you can post it into the cool. chat because I'm. Uh, multiple windows world um which is a very interesting one about how how it works a little bit and then like some performance comparisons but i i think it will be valuable in terms of like understanding how um shadow dom works with those styles um and... um it got cut off the dot 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 oh copied through Damn. for me um Let what's the search I, I can go for uh, sorry. Okay. My mum is trying to ring me. <laughs> if, if it was your dad, I would demand that you answer it. If you, but but it is your mom. Yeah, so yeah. If, yeah. if you imagine. need to take it, you can. But there anyway. it is. Yeah, I just got the top top top. The ellipsis. There we go. Cool. I'll paste this in for you. Shell scoping versus shadow dom. Got it. All right, cool. Um, looks like it's using constructible I, I, style sheets in Chrome Safari. Interesting. Um, yeah. All right. I would I would check that article out. Um, and for for them just to kind of go into there and kind of see how cool. that works and and, that, and it will show about performance stuff because granted it, it does seem strange that it's like repeating but i right. i think what it what it le what it shows is that it leans into standard like browser technology which you know shadow dom is kind of recreating what elements already do anyway right and they come with their own little style blocks inside of them so you would have thought the browsers would understand how to like make that fast because if they don't, then their own elements aren't very fast. So it's, you, you get this kind of freebie. Like, Ugh, if you write weird, web components, man. web is then, weird. Yeah. This is, yeah, um, th that, that's where my brain starts to kind of melt down, where just like, huh, all right, shadow. Yeah, okay, we're, we're, we're getting deep. Uh, but this is a cool article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to, to dig into this when my brain's a little bit more up for it. Um, this is, yeah, this is just. A, a very new world for me so i'm kind of uh excited if, if 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 not like needing you know like a day or two to kind of go oh and like reflect on it um design system related uh how do you deal with design system entropy across the nord health products uh i i'm not fully clear on like the when you use the word entropy like 
is, are you are you talking about um like self-referential or are you 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 talk about like it, i'm not quite understanding the question so let's just go off entropy yeah so like as as things get more complex they get more random they get more um the the degree of disorder or randomness in 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 the system so like things just I kind see. of like gradually de decline into disorder okay so i mean there's, there's, this is such a huge like topic uh, especially around design systems that um has multiple answers and multiple ways to tackle it um like you have 10 um, seconds we... okay <laughs> so <laughs> uh, just well you know one of, one of the things is like kind of clear documentation high communication like all sorts of different things like that that we we make extra efforts to do like we try and talk to design teams we try to talk to development teams like within our company and we work really hard to like um be involved and be helpers in in terms of like using the design system and helping people build what they want to build mm. um and yeah you do kind of get a um a, a cause of it of like trying to force people down a route that you end up getting like slight deviations and as that gets more adoption you start getting more variation and right. like I, I get it that kind of becomes a problem but if you provide the right kind of escape hatches and the opportunities to 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 deviate in the right way and like the best path then i i think you you get the best results like uh, an example is like we have a table component and it doesn't do everything that every other table like component out there can do but we wanted to provide ways that you can do that stuff without going so exotic that it's like unusable or it's like it's, it's got it, it. it it's such and, and again like if people deviate from a component that we we were hoping they would be using we find out why that's the case and we want to improve those components it's 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 a it's supposed to be living it's supposed to like constantly be updated and at the end of the day, I hate that phrase, but at the, at the end of the day, um, a design system is a consensus and that consensus is across the company. It's not just the design system team. It's it's something that we've pretty much all agreed upon on, on doing so. So we we value like feedback and contributes contributions from the wider team. Got it. So it's it sounds like it's more about like, yeah, it's collaboration, it's communication and, and hearing what's what they need, what the issues are with the things that they're not using and uh, and creating tools for people rather than creating like the tools that you think they should be using. Mm. Is that kind of um, like, like inst inst instead of like, I th like you should use it this way, you should be solving your problems in, in this way and you hand them a tool, you kind of like make the tool fit their hand, so to speak. So it's like, hey, you want to use yeah, within certain, you kind of got okay. like a compromise between like making it work for what they want to do and making it work for the end user that's going uh, to be interacting yeah, with the application. Point. So, you know, it, it, it's like that split between DX and UX, like you kind of got to like bring, uh, bring it together. Um, cool. I suppose in a little way, excuse me, we have a bit of a benefit that a lot of our developers are, are back end orientated and um, that means that they kind of quite welcome the design system as something to kind of help do the front end part which the, they may not want to do or not have the best experience with but um, Got it. yeah awesome uh i don't think you can see it but uh our friend cassie just entered the chat uh so we can finally start the show all right so uh we've, we've, we've <laughs> yeah. been waiting and, to kind of kick off. yeah yeah it's just been like I just been doing this for yeah. two hours. <laughs> you you showed us all of your Lego sets behind. We we built three. I built them as well. Sets. Yeah. Um, so now we can start. Uh, so what are web components? No. <laughs> you stop the chit chat now. That's it. We were we yeah. were waiting to learn tech. We were just doing cutesy chit chat this whole time. Um, <laughs> so may. Mayank asks, uh, what is the real benefit of using lit here? So it's a good question. Uh, versus just native custom elements. I see some boilerplate and also that it's 6 KB of extra JavaScript, which is bigger than some frameworks like Preact or Solid. I mean, great point. I you could you could use native custom elements if you so wish. Like it's it's just the case of like 
you are going to be writing a little bit more repetitively mm. and, and redoing stuff that lit gives you out of the box um and the th the other thing is if you if you write in if you write your components in preact then you sort of reside yourself to to using preact which is fine that's fine and you can probably port that stuff over but the port you won't get the portability like you will with um with web components right um and you know that's that's what we we decided as a, as a trade-off um especially how we we don't really know where our applications are going in terms of what what frameworks they might use and keeping keeping the doors open to all opportunities like in directions is is beneficial for us you know because we cool. can use a lit web component on a website or in an application you know it can be static like we've just demonstrated it's right. on a static website there just works um but we can also use it inside an application and it'll work a, a just as well um but it's, it's not to say it's better or worse than than other like frameworks and that if you if you're if your entire company is working with preact then do preact you could probably probably better off doing it that way because it's going to work for you got it yeah and i, I need to uh I really need to add the chat to this window because I, I'm, I'm realizing, oh, right, you can't see it. Um, <laughs> it then he says, uh, but then the application is still dependent on lit. So I could think there's still a dependency at the end of the day there. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, but then you could argue that like any NPM package that you install is a dependency on that NPM package. I, I suppose, like, where do you draw the line? Yeah. What, what I will say is that when you when we're building our components, we're using lit to just help us make regular web components. And all we're doing is just saving ourselves a bit of writing work by not making the component from scratch. And then that means it can drop into view and it can be dropped into React more or less. And in the newer versions of React, it will just work as is. Um, or into Eleventy or into right. I don't know, any anything really. Um you yeah, you do have a dependency on lit, but Another thing you could do is you could actually we could actually just strip lit out and have regular web components and can it compile kind of, down to a web component? Like do you not can you not send that extra JavaScript to the client or well if, kind of if you in your in your code base like now you could change lit element to HTML element. Got it. And then you would just have to like kind of write I still some have of those to write that the aren't extra really... stuff that lit takes care of. Yeah, but uh, connected like we just saw in the MDN docs, connected callback already exists. It would just be like template cool. literals and things like that that you just kind of get for for free. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I I, I do see what my Yank's saying because like you you can still bring uh, view or Svelte especially right. Like like I feel like Svelte one of its things is like yeah you can just kind of bring it anywhere and it's not going to send a ton of JavaScript to the front end. It'll send it'll send some still, but it's not like you don't have to pull in as much of like all of react or like react dom and all that so there's these benefits there so yeah the the web components aspect is interesting i suppose you might want to look into lit ssr because there's that you can do server side rendering oh, with, cool. with lit and then you can compile cool. it out that way and and then you know you get like something really performant and then put lit on top to like give it the, the superpowers back again or, or something like that oh, like hydration nice. or what you're going to call it nice um, I do want to power through the rest of these. Uh, I started learning web components recently, but just the basics. Where can I learn more about it? Um, MDM Docs is a great resource for that. Um, Lit.dev and their YouTube channel. That's a really good place cool. to go as well. Um, I, I think those are the kind of the, the main places. Um, I will be interested in other resources. I do know, actually, I'll give a plug to Dave Rupert because Dave Rupert has a course on front-end masters on doing web components. Awesome. And it is in my list of like to watch, but I haven't gotten around to it. But um, I, I, he, he's, he, he is very au fait with uh, web components and I would highly recommend that. Yeah, he's great. We, we, we uh, are in talks to have him on to chat web components. So hopefully that'll happen. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, how do I get a custom form element to validate in a native form? Ah, so super interesting question. You do, you, you do have to do a little bit of extra work with there because, um, the input doesn't actually understand the relationship between itself and the form. So what you have to do is create a proxy, uh, component, a proxy element. So hmm. what we do is we do in lit, you can do like 
well, and maybe in web components natively as well, you can do uh, shadow DOM and light DOM. So light DOM is just putting the element directly into the page. So what we do is whenever our input components are inside a form, we do a little bit of light DOM work and we put in a little hidden like form element to simulate what that form element is doing. So it's like a proxy inside of, inside of the form or inside of the component um, that's not in shadow DOM. So we can kind of provide the form element with that data, whether that be like text string or even okay. like kind of label, uh, like a checkbox or something like that. So it is a little bit like a strange way to do it, but I don't think it's any different to like kind of other frameworks exotic behavior towards form <laughs> forms that kind of got to do quite wild stuff depending on the case okay um, just something else to learn though it's just a little bit different. Yes. That, that's interesting and great question david aaron with, mm. with, with with the awesome questions um all right anthony asked uh any take on when it's appropriate to use is land which uh my understanding is that it's like 11 t's web components thing is that uh, uh, with 11T yep. instead of lit with 11T and how these two approaches compare. So I, I, I from what I, I haven't tried uh, Island yet, but uh, from what I'm aware, it, it kind of does what we've just done, but cool. like automatically, like kind of just oh, know, wow. wrap stuff up oh. and it will kind of figure out that and create the kind of client bit of it or, or hydrate oh. that. And, and you can do, it, it's, it's, it seems very powerful and I quite like that idea, especially if you want to like produce something that's a little bit more live. Like we, like we just demonstrated like something live on the page yeah. that we don't, but we don't want to turn the whole thing into an application. Um, so I think it's really useful for like kind of little micro stuff like that um, hit counter that we just produced. Um, lit is probably more appropriate when you're kind of, using web components with um with anger as as a certain phrasing you you're quite committed to like making web components have you heard that phrase i have, have not you heard that one using no, web components I, with anger. it's perfect yeah I, I i keep getting reminded of it when because phil hawks would tell me he said that at work and they they were like why are you angry about <laughs> using this it just anger? means like, like you're, you're very serious about it like you're like really well, no you you're just using it quite vigorously you're just, you're just got it okay you know like as you know you, you like i have experimented with 11t but then when i use it with like client work i'm using it with anger i'm kind of using it as right. in, 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 with commitment shall got we say. It. all right cool yeah and island uh obviously seems to be specific to 11t where you kind of so, like back to no so, so, sort of i think you can use it outside of 11t but it's okay. kind of that extra power on top and i suppose got it zach created it to kind of give 11 projects extra powers but i've I, i've seen stuff that's built for in the 11 like ecosystem and it doesn't have to be used there like they've got like the favicon generation tools and things like got that it, don't right. have to be used inside 11 okay framework independent so it could be like a lit kind of thing that's cool Mm -hmm. I, I was not, was not aware. Um, I mean, I, I really appreciate all, all, all these awesome questions. Thank you so much. Um, and I, th I think we did touch on this, but if you want to add anything, does this CSS become an inline style tag placed next to the markup? Yes. Cool. It, it does. I mean, uh, that's the thing. Like in Chrome, it's not showing it, but in Safari, it shows it as like a style tag. So when I, when I'm, I, I, often use safari and it, and it comes up as a natural little like star block that's cool. just directly in there awesome well uh i think that's about it chat thank you so much for all these fantastic questions for just hanging out for the hype trains at the beginning all that kind of stuff um one thing i forgot to plug because it's the first time we're doing it but uh, we are actually raising money for the trevor project uh i think you can donate anywhere like instead of the whole sub button you should see a donate to the trevor project button something uh we are trying to raise five five hundred dollars it's built into twitch they get none of it i get none of it but um it'd be awesome if we could hit that goal um i completely forgot to to plug it i was so excited about david being on dave thank you so much again <laughs> for being here um and chat thank you uh y'all are fantastic brent thank you buddy Miang, thank you uh and cassie thanks for stopping by who, who else has been here the last few minutes uh, every, everyone is here. Thanks so much. And, uh, Dave, uh, let me plug your site one more time. David Dons. I'm just going to keep clicking awesome. the thing. David Dons. Oh yeah. You got to keep clicking it. Yeah. 
I am. David Darns. Well, that was a different person. I wonder who that that might have. Who was that? Do I know that I voice? Him. Was that um? Was that Dave Rupert? I can't, no. I can't hear it at this end. David, <laughs> but you just no. keep clicking because it's going to be random David each time. Darns. That was Phil Hawksworth. David Darns. Oh, that's Phil Hawksworth. David Darns. I don't know who that David Darns. He he hits the R hard. I'm not sure who that was. David Darns. I don't know. Ooh, anyway, that could uh, be uh, that could be Zach. Who knows? Uh, maybe I don't. I, I don't have his voice come into memory. Um, Phil Hawksworth. <laughs> how do you not though? That that man narrates wow, my yeah, dreams. Indeed. So. Um, <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much, Dave. Uh, awesome to have you. And you. yes, everyone, please go follow Dave. And uh, we will find someone to raid. So hang on just a sec. We're going to go find some other uh, awesome streamer. And yeah, Dave, would love to have you back to chat design systems or any, anything you want, buddy. Uh, even to build uh, a DeLorean together. It would be, be a blast. That's my DeLorean. Fun. Back off. It's, not, it's all <laughs> mine. I'm doing solitude. And <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, take care, everybody. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.